Good afternoon, and uh, thank you so much uh, to Nick for inviting me here today. Um, it's also fantastic to be here in the Delaware uh, Pavilion, one of our uh, Arts Council funded national portfolio organizations. And um, also, uh, very interestingly, I did some research before I came along uh, this afternoon, and uh, I did check it out when I arrived with, with Stuart and Sally. Um, it was fascinating to note that um, in 1933, um, in support of the building of this uh, fabulous cultural institution, um, there was a grant given to this organization by the Ministry of Health of £50,000 to help with the fundraising efforts for uh, getting the uh, pavilion off, off, uh, off up and running, um, supported very much by a local campaign to help raise money to support the building. So it's really fascinating that um, health funding way back in 1933 was also about supporting our cultural life. Um, I was also delighted to be able to see the Project Artworks exhibition uh, here today, also uh, an Arts Council National Portfolio Organisation, fantastic organisation, fantastic exhibition, and thank you to all those involved in that too. Um, so I've been asked uh, here today to talk about the Arts Council's research focus and how in particular we're supporting projects uh, in the area of health and well-being. So I'll talk a little bit about, about our approach and uh, some of the projects that we're supporting and some of the strategic initiatives that we have set up. Um, but just to start, um, I would just like to um, say a few words about why this is so important. And I was very interested in uh, Nick's analysis of the instrumental and intrinsic debate and uh, I totally support the idea that really we should be talking about the, the whole way in which uh, arts and culture engages with people and people with arts and culture and we shouldn't look at these ideas of division between instrumental and intrinsic. The World Health Organization uh, suggested over 50 years ago that health is a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely an absence of disease or infirmity. So this de de definition acknowledges that good health and well-being are reliant on an array of multiple factors, not just physical, but also psychological and social. At the Arts Council, we have a profound belief that experiencing arts and culture can create a sense of well-being and transform the quality of life for individuals and communities. We believe that arts and culture have an important part to play in improving the health and well-being of people in many ways. Artists bring an enormous range of professional skills and insights to work in healthcare and well-being settings and in turn testify to the reinvigoration of their own creative practice. The methods they've developed over the years produce at their best startling artistic, personal, and social outcomes. The success of this work is borne out in the considerable evidence base, and it was really fantastic to hear about Rebecca's studies um, drawing from the Nordic countries, which suggests a strong case for the effectiveness of arts interventions in healthcare and for improving well-being. In healthcare, the broad spectrum of evidence shows how the arts achieve positive outcomes for patients, staff, the patient staff, relationship, hospitals, mental health services, and the health of the general population. But we recognize that more can be done. Evidence which suggests a strong case is not always enough. When our research team undertook an evidence review, which Rebecca referred to earlier, we looked at uh, research that explored to what extent arts and culture brought these health and well-being benefits to society. And we found that a large proportion of the research was made up of small-scale studies which did not track the longer-term benefits. We concluded that in order to better understand the effects that arts and culture can have on people, we do need more rigorous research. We need large-scale, longitudinal studies which follow the same populations over time, tracking the outcomes of those individuals exposed to arts and culture interventions, there's that word again, compared to those that aren't. So in the Arts Council, for the first time, we decided to set up uh, a grant funding program to support research. 
and earlier this year, we invited applications for that £2.5 million programme. The aim of the programme is to deepen our knowledge and understanding of the impact of arts and culture and the complex role it plays in society, in our experience as individuals and on the fabric of our society. The programme covers areas as diverse as the economy, health and well-being, education, society, the environment, as well as cultural impact. Applicants were able to apply for one to three years of funding and for between 50 to 100,000 pounds per year. Bids were invited from partnerships of arts and cultural organizations together with researchers. For the first time, we wanted to ensure that arts organizations were empowered to be equal with researchers and not just the subject of inquiry. And the aim was also to increase the capacity uh, of arts organizations in the field of research and promoting greater collaboration with researchers. So in the first round of the program, we invested around 1.4 million pounds in eight research partnerships across England, involving small, medium and large scale arts and cultural organizations. The projects explore the value of the arts and museums from a range of diverse perspectives and disciplines. Uh, so just a couple of examples uh, of the projects that we're funding. Uh, the Royal College of Music uh, are undertaking a two-year research study working with Imperial College London and the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Research is a world-first study to investigate the impact of group singing activity among mothers experiencing postnatal depression. The research will collect psychological, physiological and biological data in a randomized control design. This will be supplemented by a national study tracking the interactions between mental well-being, symptoms of PND, and the involvement in music interventions in women during pregnancy and the first year of motherhood. Uh, in another music uh, project, the music, Plymouth Music Zone, in partnership with Plymouth University, will be exploring how to include, mu how to in include and make music with those whose communication is non-verbal, uh, such as people with dementia, autism, or stroke. The project will focus on deepening understanding of the role the unspoken plays in music making, including those who do not or cannot speak, while seeking to articulate how that happens. The findings will have implications for addressing the unspoken with inclusive practice across the arts and cultural sector and how this helps practitioners in fields such as health and education. Uh, the Whitworth Art Gallery uh, and has a three-year research partnership with the Tyne and Weir Archives and Museums and researchers from University College London. This project will evaluate culture and health programs in Manchester and Tyne and Weir and seeks to fill the gaps in the evidence base for understanding the value of museum encounters on health and well-being. It will look at critical success factors for museums in health programming and evaluation and explore how these findings can feed into broader regional and national agendas. We're also pleased to be working with University College London on a social prescribing review, exploring the concept of museums on prescription. This review will give a comprehensive overview of social prescribing, its background, and the various models and schemes which exist across the country. Uh, we think this review is long overdue and very timely given the changes and economic challenges that both the arts and health sectors are facing, including changes to the Health and Social Care Act. Uh, the review is going to be published uh, very soon and offers an insight into the challenges and opportunities of community referral and provides several examples of best practice, guidance on evaluation and suggested pathways for implementing social prescription. Um, also, I'd like to um, say thank you very much to Louise for the uh, introduction to the What Works Centre for Wellbeing. Arts Council is very pleased to be supporting and engaging with that initiative, uh, along with many other partners uh, referred to. And we think that that's going to be really helpful in uh, increasing our understanding of the research in this field. Additionally, we're working with the National Council for Voluntary Organisations on a cultural commissioning program, which is aimed to help arts organizations, museums, and libraries to develop skills and the capacity to engage in cultural commissioning. 
It also aims to enable commissioners to develop awareness and know-how of commissioning arts and cultural organisations to deliver public service outcomes and to encourage and strengthen relationships between cultural providers and commissioners. Mental health and well-being and older people are two of the key strands of this programme. So far, the Cultural Commissioning Programme has collated a range of resources for those wanting to engage in public service commissioning and for commissioners such as local authorities, clinical commissioning groups, the NHS and others wanting to work with arts and cultural providers. They've started to collect some great case studies uh, showing how arts and cultural programmes are impacting on the social outcomes which commissioners are looking for. We're also working with the Bering Foundation on a programme to support the opportunities for older people in care homes to be able to access the arts. We know that over the age of 75, arts engagement and participation drops off dramatically. So we're very keen to look at examples of good practice where artists, arts organisations and cultural organisations can make a real difference to people's lives and promoting a bridge between older people and the wider community. We believe that participation in arts and culture can have a significant impact on the wider determinants of health such as improving living environments, increasing educational attainment, and building social capital. Through the initiatives that I've talked about, we want to recognise and celebrate the wide range of arts and culture in a variety of healthcare settings and in everyday life, and gain a better understanding of their impact on individuals as a whole. For decades now, artists, arts organisations and museums have been doing just this, enabling people to access the arts and culture helping them to improve the quality of their lives by providing rich and meaningful arts and cultural experiences. We recognise that arts and culture can make a major contribution to the health and well-being of everyone. And in partnership, Arts Council England can achieve its mission to get great art to everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs>